Yo, what's going on guys? Eagle Talks Football. We are back again with another video. And today we got some huge Mikel Moreno updates on what's going on with Mikel Moreno. Also, Arsenal have received some approaches for Aaron Ramsdale and have knocked that back right away. So we got to get into that plus a major Eddie and Kitia twist and a little bit more sprinkle around this video. But before we go any further, do me a favor, please do hit that like button. Please do hit that subscribe button if you guys are new here. Let me know what you guys think going into the new season. How are you guys feeling? Are you very confident? We're going to go up against Wolves in the opening game. So I'm very confident in that game. Let's see how how uh, how things go from now to the end of the 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 end of the transfer window also but before we go any further people there was some updates that we need to speak about today some things that we're floating about and first thing we're going to do is talk about the update from David Onstein. David Onstein gave us a major update earlier in the day. Uh, I think it was about seven hours ago. He he, he spoke about, uh, around lunchtime. He spoke about the potential. Actually, it was 12 hours ago. He, he mentioned this around 7 a.m. Let me tell you guys what David Onstein said. I'm just going to put it on the screen. Sorry for, for, the, for a second. First of all, Arsenal received an approach from Ajax over initial loan deal for Aaron Ramsdale. But it's not suited to the club who prefer the player to be moving on a permanent this summer. Um, Ajax remain optimistic and are still interested in a move. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't accept a loan with an obligation to buy, but Arsenal are not going to be put in a situation where they loan out Aaron Ramsdale and they don't have any agreement for that club to purchase the player. And I think that's the right approach to take at this moment in time. Usually I'll disagree with Arsenal when they make decisions, but I do think on this Aaron Ramsdale decision, we have we have a decent amount of money invested in Aaron Ramsdale. He's still a top keeper. He's still very, very young, if I'm not mistaken. He's like 24 at the, at this moment in time. Let me just make sure I'm make, uh, that is correct by checking yes no he's 26 actually what am i talking about 24 he joined arsenal when he was 24 why am, why am i still thinking he's 24 two years later uh, uh two uh, three years down the line he he's obviously gotten a little bit older long story short Aaron ramsdale is most likely going to be moving from arsenal if we can get somebody who's willing to pay the fee or even defer it and make it a one-year loan with an obligation at the end of the time Arsenal are looking for a valuation that is reasonable. They're not going crazy, but we have we have been told by David Onstein that this is going to be something that is going to go down to the wire. And Arsenal have already identified the replacement also. The replacement is going to be Joao Garcia. Potentially, that is going to be the Arsenal goalkeeper replacement. If we do replace uh, Aaron Ramsdale, that is going to be who is going to be replacing him. And just to show you guys, there is... Uh, one second. There is uh, news on that also. In the article, he says, if Arsenal part ways with Aaron Ramsdale uh, this month, the club have already lined up Espanyol's Joao Garcia as a potential replacement. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens with Aaron Ramsdale because they already have their replacement ready to go. And this just seems like it's going to be a straight... Um, we sell Aaron Ramsdale. Uh, we sell Aaron Ramsdale. We go get Joao Garcia for a much cheaper fee. And we now have a decent backup and we're going to have two spanish keepers basically as our as our as our keeper as our keepers plus whoever we have as our third keeper we'll have to wait and see but for now that is the situation with Aaron Ramsdale it's not really as much of a conundrum as we had with Eddie and Ketia now if you guys don't know what we did with the Eddie and Ketia situation it's pretty straightforward we had a situation where Eddie and Ketia's deal was knocked back from Marseille and we should have just accepted the lower fee Personally, the 27 million euros was enough to accept for Eddie and Ketia. But Marseille did not want to match Arsenal's demands of 30 million euros for the package for Eddie and Ketia. They've insisted, uh, they insist to divide, uh, to pursue a move for Eliwea, and they've gotten their deal, they've gotten their man. But now we find a back a backdoor route. Eddie and Ketia is now. Bournemouth have strong interest in Eddie and Ketia, and Dominic Solanke uh, has gone to Tottenham, so he could potentially be Dominic Solanke's replacement. This is not only reported by one person, it's also reported by Fabrizio Romano, saying that, uh, what do you call it, Bournemouth have made Eddie and Ketia their, uh, uh, sorry, Bournemouth have made Eddie and Ketia, uh, have added Eddie and Ketia to their shortlist, and have held initial talks regarding a transfer. 
This is amazing. Eddie and Kitia still has suitors, guys. I think Eddie and Kitia in a team lower down the table, he would definitely be able to bang in goals for them. Uh, at Arsenal, it's just a little bit different where you need a little bit more quality. You're facing a lot more uh, lower lower blocks. You're not getting as many opportunities uh, as, you, uh, as you would um, to go up against uh, defenses that would just let you go at them. Where at Arsenal... Aiden Kitia, I don't think he's ever going to be that guy who begs in 20 goals a season. But I think if he played for a lesser team, he could potentially get 10 to 15 if he gets the penalties and he gets all the chances. I do see him being potentially one of those guys like uh, Mikel Antonio, who who's just steady Eddie. You know what I mean? No pun intended. But yeah. Enough about that. Let's get into the news today about Mikel Moreno. That's why you guys are here. That's why you guys want to watch the video. That's probably why you guys clicked on the video. So let me make sure I don't waste any more of your time talking about anything else. Arsenal and Real Sociedad are still some parts away over the structure and the amount on the, uh, of the deal. Mikel Moreno's proposal for the transfer and Real Sociedad are holding out for 35 million, but Arsenal are are aiming to pay closer to 10 million. This is a 10 million euros difference between uh, Arsenal and Sociedad. I don't think that's too far apart. We should be able to get it done. There's also another tweet here from Miguel Dlene. While Moreno wants to go, uh, everything seems to be clear uh, on his side. Arsenal have been uh, enduring slow negotiations over both the price and paid installments. Arsenal would prefer to spread uh, any agreed fee over three years, where Sociedad wants much more up front. That is also another situation. And then the final tweet is, Mikel Moreno is intended to move to Arsenal. Mikel Arteta has already been pl uh, planning uh, for different ways to uh, that he can use the player, there is con conse uh, there is uh, consequently what? How do you? How, sorry, I've never seen this word in a while. Let me just. What on earth is going on? One second. You know when you're trying to. Let me click on this. Consequently. Yeah, so I said it right. Consequently, uh, a, conf um, a, con a confidence that uh, it can happen, but Arsenal are apprehensive. Uh, what? Is that it? I'm sorry. I'm struggling to read today. What's going on? Anticipating. Anticipating a long hour of negotiation with Real Sociedad. Now, enough about the reading. Let me just give you guys my take on the situation. I think Arsenal will eventually get this done, and 10 million is not a ridiculous amount of difference between the two clubs we're not going to walk away from this deal we want the player we want to get it done we're just trying to save a little bit here and a little bit there in order to try to get the deal sorted now if we do get that 10 million in savings we and we also potentially sell on Ramzo and Eddie and Ketia that could be a lot of money to help us get another signing down the line that we want and we do want another signing we want an attacker also so this is huge. This is a good benefit for Arsenal, and this will massively benefit Arsenal to get further transfers down the line. I know you guys are just saying, just pay the money, just pay the money, but I do think we have enough quality in the team right now to manage in the short term. And what you guys are seeing right now is Arsenal did their team photos and everything, and they just posted all the team photos and everything today. But I just wanted to go back to this. Um, that extra 10 million euros could go a long way in helping us secure another transfer. Let's be honest. But at the same time, if you guys are saying we're being cheap, we need to just pay the money. Well, we knocked off $10 million for the Calafuri deal. I think midfield right now, with Thomas Partey fit, Jorginho okay, we will be okay for the first couple games. And the window closes before we play Man City. So I expect him to be done and dusted by that point of the season. But even if we signed him today, he's not playing against Wolves. So don't get yourself too upset yet. The, we, there's still a long way to go in the window. We're only in the 13th of August. I know you guys are probably going to say this is copium. You, you're not serious, but I am. I'm dead serious when I say this. No need to panic yet. It's not panic stations. The deal is going to get done. It's just we're 10 million off. If there's a situation where somebody else comes in and, they are, and they're willing to pay the 35 million, then we might have a problem. But at this moment in time, 
the player wants to come to Arsenal. He's told Atletico Madrid and Barcelona beat it. So we are in a good situation. This deal is going to get done. No need to panic. And also, we've been linked to many different wingers the past couple of days with uh, Kingsley Coleman, uh, Samuel Odingra. It does look like we're going to look at an attacker. It's just at this moment in time, we don't have a concrete idea on who that attacker is. But there is a report that Samuel Odingra, uh, we have a boost that we could potentially get Samuel Odingra for a little bit cheaper as as there's a situation where Samuel Odingra, um, he, I think, I think what do you call it? Brighton have signed a player. Brighton signed a player. And the player that they signed is also a right winger. So Samuel Dingra also plays right wing at Brighton right now. And that could potentially mean that it could make it easier for Arsenal to potentially get the transfer of uh, Samuel Dingra to Arsenal. Personally, I don't think Samuel Dingra is that much of an upgrade at this moment in time. I question how much of an upgrade Samuel Dingra is. Uh, but a lot of people who know uh, more about uh, Samuel Dinger than me have told me that this guy is an absolute baller. So we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, just to show you guys, this is the player Brighton signed, 20-year-old um, from Mites for 30 million euros. He got four goals, three assists in the Bundesliga last year, and he's coming in. So this could potentially mean Samuel Dinger could be headed out the door. We'll, we will have to wait and see, ladies and gentlemen. And let me just see if good old Eduardo Hagen tweeted anything out recently. Oh, yeah, there's also uh, Wojciech Szczesny has left his club on a free. Um, he's left Juventus, gotten paid off. That could be something that Arsenal could look at. But I think it's unlikely at this moment in time that that's going to happen. But, yeah, nothing else really. Uh, we already spoke about majority of these uh, things. So we will see what happens next. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And yeah, um, the next video I'm going to do is Arsenal Premier League, Arsenal's Premier League predictions. And I'm, I'm going to probably do a separate show also for, uh, for Premier League predictions. But for now, I leave you guys a do. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And hopefully you guys enjoy these type of videos. Leave a like if you watched up to this point. And I appreciate all you guys watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Love.